In this presentation, we're going to look at how to test normality with SAS. Now, in particular, what we're going to use is the PROC univariate uh, procedure. The data set we're going to use is called Virginica, and it's available at my website, uh, call, uh, which is koBrianDublin.wordpress.com. Now, the Virginica data set is comprised of four numeric variables, and we're going to use the top two there, sepal len and sepal width. And this is the sepal length and sepal width of iris, irises, the Virginica species of iris. Anybody who's familiar with the iris data set will know that this is actually just a subset of the uh, iris data set. It's a very famous data set used for uh, statistical training. So, moving on from that, uh, PROC univariate is used to summarize the data distribution of an analysis variable and in particular it can be used to, to test the assumption of normality. Now other aspects of the PROC univariate uh, procedure will be dealt with in other videos. There's quite a lot to PROC univariate so I'm just, uh, in, in each video I'm just uh, analysing one particular component piece by piece. So the tests that the uh, PROC uh, univariate will do, we'll actually do all four of these together. And we'll do the Shapiro-Wilk test, kolmogorov smirnov test, Kramer von Mises test and Anderson Darling. And in each case, it'll present a p value. And if the p value is greater than 0.05, then you may assume that the data set is normally distributed. So let's look at a quick example there. This is just a sort of quick remark first off that I'm going to present this using HTML ODS, output delivery system. Essentially, uh, to just to sort of present it, present it rather than sort of code on a screen, present it as a HTML document, which is easier to read. ODS, HTML, then we name the file, which I'm going to call hists. The reason I call hists is because I'm tying it in with a different, um, um, a different uh, presentation which is also to do with histograms so it's that's just a smaller remark we could call it norm tests as well and the style is html blue so you'll sort of see that quite short shortly we put in the code here that we're going to use and then we just finish uh, off we switch off ods html just say ods html close so what we're going to do here is as follows essentially what we're going to use is the proc univariate procedure okay we're going to analyze the virginica data set and in particular, what we're going to look at is uh, we are going to look at normal tests, tests for normality. So what I'm going to do here, it's not part of the default running of the PROC univariate. So I have to add in, um, I have to add in uh, PROC, uh, or I have to add into the uh, specification normal. This sort of says run the tests for normality. Now I'm going to run a PROC, sep or I'm only going to use, do it for two variables just for the sake of brevity. The first two variables from the Virginica data set, sepal len and sepal width. Okay, so let's go to SAS there now. Uh, the Virginica data set is already set up in the PC, so there it is there. And you can access that through my website. Okay, just run that bit of code first. I have it ran there already. Now, but what we have here is the um, the uh, the code there from that I just presented there, and it's just a sort of uh, verbatim as I from the uh, slides there. So let's just run that. Okay, now here is the output here, the output on the top right, and we have the output for both variables there. That's why I only done it for both variables. And you see here we have tests for normality. So I'm gonna click on that, and I'm gonna click on the HTML output there. So this is what we're looking at here. We have the test, the, each of the four tests, uh, we have the test statistic, which is not something we would sort of usually sort of interpret, but we'd also look at the p-value here at the left on the right-hand side, and in each case, the p-value here is not point greater, not point two five eight three, not point not nine five three, not point one five three eight, and not point one five zero six. In each of the case here, we have a p-value that is greater than 0 0.05. So in this case, we assume that the uh, sepal length, which is the first variable, the variable we're looking at here, sepal length, we will assume that this uh, data set is normally distributed. Let's look at sepal width here, the other variable, and let's go down to uh, test for normality. Here we will see that uh, there is actually a slight contradiction. So uh, we have Kolmogorov, Smirnoff, uh, Kramer von Mises, Anderson Darling. Now, three of the tests there suggest that the uh, data set is normally distributed. 
Kalmogorov Smirnov suggests that it's not normally distributed, but it's close enough, so you have to make a sort of judgment call here. 5%, 0.05 was an arbitrary threshold. So even though they, um, this is actually less than 0.05, we're going to sort of still, uh, but the rest of it, it's not too far away from 0.05, and the rest of the... Uh, uh, proceed, uh, the rest of the tests indicated that we can assume normality. So overall, we're going to assume normality for this data set. Now, uh, in reality, things are not so cut and dry, but if you just want a sort of quick answer there, it, we're going to sort of assume that it is normally distributed. Again, the, sometimes these tests do contradict each other. It's not really a major deal. If there were, if there was if two of them were... Um, if the first off, if we had other p values close to 0 0.05, for example, this is reasonably close to 0 0.05, 0 0.0889, and this is 10% and 18%. So it is not as a not as a strongly uh, uh, supported the evidence that this data set is normally distributed, but we can assume it is normally distributed for this uh, to from this from here on. That ends the presentation.